say on the Mick Tully show, I'm, you'll have to give me a moment. I actually am. It's one of the moments where I'm a bit starstruck, to tell you the truth, uh, because today's guest on the Mick Tully show is the one and only Master Samuel Kwok. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I've been... I'm going to be very boring here and tell you now. I've been, I'm a huge martial arts nerd and always have been. That's why I'm, I'm into martial arts. And you were one of the guys that I used to read about back in the day when I was a young man growing up. So it's an absolute, it's just an honor and a privilege to get you to chat uh, today. So the first question I'm going to ask you is, how did you get started in martial arts? I was bullied in school. Bullied at school? Because my father was the headmaster of the primary school. Right, okay. So, people well, you, you mentioned earlier, it's quite, quite interesting you said this, that you had quite an unconventional uh, childhood. Where did you live? Where were you born and brought up? Uh, I was first I was uh, born in uh, St. John's Cathedral in Hong Kong. <laughs> St. John's Cathedral in Hong Kong? The Anglican uh, Church, yeah. Right. And one of the uh, famous landmark now. And my father was the deacon. Right. So, and then I grew up a little bit until I was about, I think, about ten. Yes. Like that. And then we, my father, become a qualified reverend. Right. So he gave him his own church. It's like in the Wild West, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say because. When, when you think of Hong Kong, especially in that time period, mm. you know, we will talk about the, the, the Yip Man movie, but the minute you see it, it's like, whenever I see anything that's based in Hong Kong from that time period, I always think to myself, do all the guys, do they all they ever do is fight in alleyways or fight on rooftops? Because I didn't think it, there was anything, was it as, was it as dangerous? Um, yeah, where, where he, the church moved to is like completely, um, it's like the, like the east end of London. Right. So you got a um, a uh, butcher. Yes. Uh, like a meat meat market, vegetable market, fish market. Right. So all the people there, are, a lot of them are gangsters. Wow. Triads, triads. <laughs> Dr so a lot of uh, fighting over territories and things. Yeah, like and that. that's when did the yeah. So how old were you when the bullying started, and then you went into martial arts? I think I was about uh, twelve, thirteen years old. Wow. I got pushed on the ground and say, you had master and son, so what? <laughs> so I say, I'm always into Kung Fu because uh, where my father's church is, we, we stay on the, on the top of the, the church we live Yes. There. And opposite, there's a, like a um, swimming, uh, swimming place. Yes. You know, it's a swimming club. Yes. And they have a, for charity, they have a massive screen for movie. And they're showing all this Kwan Taking movie, you know, wow. like Wong, Wong Fei Hong movie. Wong Fei Hong. Yeah. So every wow. and every night we are looking at that. <laughs> oh yeah. That must be magical to see that, right? Yeah. So I went to Kung Fu. Yeah. You, you, but yeah. It, when I was when I was younger, I used to look at it. Martial arts, I thought, was it, it was the answer to all of my problems. You know, I was bullied. Oh, you just have to be tougher than these guys. And then, unfortunately, you start training and you realise it's, it's, it's hard to fight guys who can't fight, but it's even harder to fight guys who can fight. Mm -hmm. And you just got to stick with it. So what, your first, I, I did my research here. Your first art was White Crane, was uh, it? There was another style. It's called Wing Chun White Crane before that. Wing, Wing Chun White Crane. Right, and so who was that with? Different. Uh, it's called, uh, one of those classmates brought me to a grandmaster called Zhang Wanlong. Right. And this guy was 70 odd years old and it's just incredible. Yeah, it just blew you so, away. Oh, yeah. And how long did you stay in there? Um, so I stayed there for a few years. Yeah. And um, my uncle was Lok Chi Fu and he was one of the most uh, famous uh, it's very famous. White Queen style. Yeah. yeah, you said very, very famous in Hong Kong, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I didn't have a chance to study with him then. But you see, this is yeah. funny because Guru Dan... Until in later. Yeah, this is crazy because Guru Dan in Osanto mm. has mentioned so many times. He was a, a first, first Dan in Kenpo Karate mm. with Ed Parker. And his father used to watch him train and he'd smile because it was only years later he found out that all of these guys he thought... Were, he said... That, they were friends of his father, but he called them all uncles. And then they all ended up being like grandmasters in K 
Carly and Arnis, mm -hmm. but their relationship, you, you didn't train with family members because they were your family, you know, and then mm -hmm. he found out afterwards how good they were. And Guru Dan always says he feels embarrassed now because he thought as a young man, he knew everything mm -hmm. and he was explaining to these guys and they were like, oh. Yeah, you know, uh, what happened was uh, I, I start, I got, have to be able to go to the church. You know, church choir and everything, yes. and go to every ser you know service, and and then the church somebody start teaching judo. Right. So I joined it and learned judo, and uh, actually, uh, the bully one day he tried to do that to me, and I threw him over the in the <laughs> in assembly. Yeah. In the assembly at yeah, school. We're queuing up outside the the, the classroom. And everybody was like, oh, they caught him anyway. Really? So I didn't get in trouble. <laughs> oh, wow. So how did, how mm -hmm. did you go from uh, Wing Chun, White Crane, Judo, yeah. to Wing Chun? So I started with Judo, and then Wing Chun, White Crane, and other, all the other martial arts. And, yes. And then we, we, because my father sent every, every year, there's a Bible studying in a summer camp. Right. You have to go. I said, oh, not again. <laughs> Then we met all the people who do the martial art. That's when I learned a lot of different martial arts from there. Wow! And Thai boxing and things. Like what What did you what, out of all of the arts that you saw there? What did you What did you like most, or what int What interested you? Uh, at the time, I was uh, quite uh, impressed with Thai boxing yeah. because it's very fast, and the guy kicked me three times. and still didn't know what. Yeah. yeah. If you get it's kicked, really if, you, fast, uh, yeah. if you go, if you train with someone who knows Thai boxing, mm. there's pain, and then there's I didn't realize that it hurt that much. Yeah, later I trained with uh, a guy in England, Malaysia, for Malaysia, Master, Master, uh, Master Win. Right. He's good friends of uh, Master Scan. Right. And we are very, very good friends, Master Scan. And yeah. Every demonstration used to ask me to go. Really? We did Master one in Blackpool Tower. Really? The tournament, yeah, I was and there. Was that with the sword and kicking the apple yeah, off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I see that, I'm thinking, one day His he's going to. One, one, <laughs> one day those toes are going to fly. But he's still doing it. He's still he's still yeah. in great shape. Still flexible as hell. You know, a great advert. A great advert for martial arts. Extending. Hey, I'm 68. I, well, th <laughs> that was that was one of the things I was going to say, um, because it, you you know, you are defying. The aging process, like like most of the guys that I've trained with, um, as the years go on, the martial arts just helps you stay more supple. Do you, do you find do you find when you look at some of your friends who don't train of the oh, of the yeah. same age? Yeah, look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> Muscles disappear. Yeah, yeah. Well, Arnold does it. We we saw we saw Arnold in February, right? Yeah. And Arnold looks great with a suit on now. He doesn't take his shirt off very often, no, does no, he? No, 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 he's different, different. So who did you train first in Wing Chun with? In Wing Chun, I was a, uh, come of course, a guy, um, bas I was playing tri for church, bas right. basketball. So my basketball captain one day said to me, hey, I want to, I know, I do Kung Fu too. This is, uh, what do you do, Wing Chun? I said, never heard of it. <laughs> so he was showing me Siu Lim Tao. And yeah. You know, I say, well, you can't fight with that. <laughs> Let's spar. <laughs> and can you fight with that? And, and uh, he kept coming up like that to me. Yeah. With a, with a fun look in front. So I just kick him in the side kick to his shin all the time. Right. So his shin start bleeding. I said, I said, not very good, is it? <laughs> really? Until I, later, then yeah. I come across Bruce Lee. Oh, wow, Bruce Lee do Wing Chun. Then I look into it, wow, that's impressive, Bruce Lee, in a movie, using a mention. Yeah, you see, yeah. This, this, is one of, get. this is one of the things, it's like, yeah, I teach Jeet Kune Do, and I love Jeet Kune Do, and yeah. uh, Rick Fay, my instructor in America, if you're watching, I apologise, my Wing Chun is awful. And it is, Wing Chun was, it was a building block of the Jeet Kune Do system, and Bruce Lee was, I think you, uh, it's very you, you illustrate, basic, yeah. yeah, you illustrated it very well, that you said, when you first saw the Wing Chun and you just psychic the guy, you know, every time he came in, it's yeah, not the it's psychic. not the style, it's the man. Yeah. Because then when you when you meet someone who really knows how to do it, then it, mm -hmm. it is something else. So famously, you have a great connection directly to, to Yip Man. Can you explain can you explain how, how that came about? So I learned from um, 
Like later, a guy called Lee Singh and I mean, trained with my friends called Simon Lau. And, yeah. And then later then met Lee Singh. Uh, Lee Singh is actually a, uh, one of the congregation of the church I went to. My father, go, my father said, go to that church. Mission wow. for Seamen. Yeah. And the priest actually learned the monkey style from Kang Tak Hoi. And the grandmaster. Wow. The monkey style. Wow. I said, you have to teach me. He said, no, I can't teach you. I'm a priest. So he said, but my congregation can teach you. He knows Wing Chun. So he met Lee Sing and trained him for three or four years. And then I went back to Hong Kong. Yeah. To, because my parents say I was a psychiatric nurse. Yeah. For 38 years. And I came over six years. So my parents say, it's time for you to come home. We miss you because uh, they're advertising for nurses. So I went to Hong Kong and lived there and, and worked there for three years. Right, and what period was this? Between 1978 to 81. Wow. And then when I went there, my teacher, Lee Sing, came back to Hong Kong and then he said, come with me to a meeting, uh, joining the Yip Man Martial Association. I said, okay, so I have to go because I'm one of the senior students. Yeah. And afterwards, he said, let me introduce to you. I look at this guy, small guy. Oh, okay. This is Yip Chun, son of Yip Man, elder yes. son of Yip Man. I nearly died. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And everything is like arranged by God, you know, or fate. Yes. Fate. And he said to me, have you done a dummy? I said, not really. Come and dummy for me. So I go to one to one with him. Yeah. Right. And then... <laughs> I think I only paid him $70. That's it. That's in a red envelope. But afterwards, he, he can foresee in the future. Yes. I can take him, he'll be big. Yeah. So when I came back, I started promoting him from 1981. And I was in uh, Fighter Magazine in 1983. I've still got that. I've still got that. <laughs> I still have that. Yeah, and then 85, I brought him over. 86. Yeah. We went to Switzerland. We went to Denmark. We went to Germany. Yeah. yeah, well, uh, uh, well and you're so you're actually to, you're actually to blame for me starting Wing Chun in Germany. I lived in Germany for five and a half years, oh, yeah. and I used to read in the magazines. And I looked around, and it's if you, you know in Germany, there's you know it's Long Ting and Keith Kernspect. Yeah, yeah. And I went there, and for me, it, it wasn't it it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. But I was still I yeah I. I was never a Bruce Lee fan. I was always a Danny No Santo fan. I always liked the idea of becoming a better person through martial arts, yeah. and not 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 just the style. And that's going to lead me on to. You mentioned earlier that you know Ip Chun could he could foresee what was going to happen. So it was a good investment for both of you for seventy dollars because yeah, you even went to Australia, South Africa. Everything. You had you you had um, all the magazine promoting. Yeah. And we, what? With our friend Danny Connor, don't forget. Danny Connor! He's my best wow. friend. Wow! Yeah. Now that he, is a he name. Did, he did a lot of promotion for Wing Chun, you know, in this country. Danny Connor. He, that, put, uh, the late, he helped me to put him in the magazine. With the, late the late great, the late great Danny Connor. Yeah, he used yeah. to have the place up in Manchester. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was something else. And Danny Connor... He he was was he karate initially and karate karate and then yeah. first uh, guy went to Japan to train and yeah the he was exactly he was one of the first yeah. guys to do it and yeah. he was like as they say it, 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 in England he was like Marmite you either loved him or hated yeah. him because some people really loved him and then some people were like I don't like him but he was way ahead of the curve yeah, he trained with Alan Lamb at first and then they uh, all found that Alan Lamb to go to Hong Kong and then later uh, I. He met me and I was teaching him Wing Chun and then I introduced him to uh, Grandmaster Yip Chun. Yeah. And he well, also went to, uh, yeah. And yeah you he see did this, a lot of help to promote. He, he did. Well, you see, country. this is what I was going to say. Yeah. You got a great investment in $70 in training, but Yip Chun got a great investment as well because... Well, we, we both make the Wing Chun known. Make it huge. And that, this, helps, helps well, this is, this is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get onto. Mm. In the UK... There was always, you know, there was always problems with, but you never seemed to have any of that. You were just like, you train. If your Wing Chun's good, your Wing yeah. Chun is good. I don't want to, I don't care well, if your we, favorite we color is blue. away from... All of that politics, From yeah. politics, less uh, Kung Fu do the talking. 
<laughs> yeah, and that's unfortunately why politics happen yeah. because all my videos on YouTube you can yeah. yeah, but everyone's Watch. as I always say, everyone is everyone is a critic and a film critic is a guy who's not good enough to write a film. You know, a book critic is a guy who knows enough about books but can't write his own book. Yeah, I never listen to critics because at least I, I, I'm having a go. So, so I went to America. Yeah, and um, did a series of uh, DVDs, and we got about five books out. Yeah, all together. Yeah, and uh, and then uh, they all um, people invite me to go introduce me to. The Hall of Honors, we are Alan Goldberg. Yes. And um, so do seminar there, and different people come and try it, and yeah. Who, so who's who? Um, who's the you know the most interesting or famous person that's come to you for training? Uh, Cynthia's done looking into Winston. Cynthia yeah. Rufrock, yeah, very very good friend, and Don Wilson, a very good friend of mine. Yeah. But actually, uh, last last uh, two years ago, I was doing a demonstration, and then one guy, I say, anybody want to come and, you know, any question, going to try? This guy jumped out. I want to try. He's a massive, three hundred pound guy. Right. And uh, he's two times world kickboxing champion. Really? Yeah. And his name is uh, uh, Marcos Taylor. Right. You must have heard of him. Yeah. Right? And uh, his stuntman as well. And uh, yeah, he came out and he tried to kick me, he tried to punch me, and I dropped him three times. Really? <laughs> After that, he said, <laughs> Yeah, become you, good friends. He wanted, yeah, yeah, have you, he wanted to learn. Have, have you noticed mm. that when guys, um, there, there's certain martial arts, there's a, a great clip on YouTube of mm. um, Anderson Silva training with Guru in Osanto, and they're doing a split entry drill. And Anderson Silva is one of the best martial artists in the you know in the world at what he does, but he still wants to be a student. And have you found that as you've got older? Because when we talked off camera, you said you thought you were figuring it out, but the longer it goes on and you train, the oh, more you've got learning to learn, every right? Day. I'm 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 no grandmaster. I'm a learner. If if you say satisfy yourself, you you are finished learning. Yeah. So I'm still trying to find out what to make Wing Chun better. Yeah, and how do you how do you see it? Because the Wing Chun, uh, the Yip Man movie, made Wing Chun huge again, right? Yes. yes. So first of all, yeah, I know yeah. you had you had you had a little bit of dealing with the the fight choreography. I, I said I said to my sifus and the guy who to uh, organize the film, Sin uh, Long, yeah, I said to them. No high kicks. <laughs> Make sure no high kick. I told you to Leo, no high kicks. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be finished. No. no. Got to be different from the other ones, you know. Exactly. So, so they they did exactly what I yeah what we did yeah. Yeah, and what, 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 all of the movies, yeah. all of the movies are good uh, are good, and mm. they have made Wing Chun popular again. And Wing Chun is a very specialized art. You, you know. Uh, the only people I've ever met that tell me Wing Chun doesn't work are the guys who have tried it and they just, uh, are they, sorry, but they, you know, you're rubbish at it. They don't stay in, they don't stay long enough in the art mm. to find that so they don't have an opinion on it. Yeah. How many years? Yeah, have, I think, I think yeah. with the Wing Chun and people say this theory, that theory, that theory, that theory. How do you know it works if you don't fight? <laughs> so I, you know, I, I, I met uh, Grandmaster Wong Sun Leung, one of the best fighters yeah. of all I say, hey, Si Sok, what's your advice for me? You know what he said? What did he Samuel say? Samuel Kwok, you ask me these questions, you are not done enough fighting. Fight more! Fight with any style, anybody. Fight in the street. I did it. Really? And, and yeah. So Good advice. That's that's the best advice I ever got. Yeah. So you know, I trained people fifth time. You know, you know I, Peter Constantine was my student. Really? My first I, student. I didn't know this. My first private student. Peter. Private lesson wow. arranged by Danny Connor. On really? His shop, on his shop. Yeah. Wow. Because in that period. Oriental world. Yeah. Oriental shop, world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was my first student. I, I used to always read in the magazines about you could walk in there on a Saturday, mm. and there could be like. 
10 different world-class martial artists just in there and not buying stuff but just hanging out there talking yeah. and uh i it, i look but i look at that and i just miss that period you know i started training in 1985 so you've been training a few years by the time i started but it, it must have been a magical time around manchester with those guys uh, around yeah. there he's, he's the heart right. then he has got a heart for the martial <laughs> yeah well he, he was he was very passionate passion yeah uh, yeah very passionate he and when he was doing some of the qigong and stuff towards the end of his life and the yeah. qigong uh, everybody was saying why are you doing this why are you doing this and uh he must have seen something in it because yeah. he he was way ahead of most people so where do you see wing chun going in the future um because of all the movies i was in a movie not, not long ago right yeah it just came up now they changed and it was called a chemist and now they change it to Assassin X. So just released in America. Right. And buy on Amazon. And I need to get you all at the end of this, right? Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I'm the one, I want to put Wing Chun in it, 100%. Yes. So they say, hey, you've got to fight with the guns. And I say, no, 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 okay. So at the end, they say, I say, I just use my hands. And it came out, it won seven awards. You know, really? Movie. But it's different. And I was with Eric Lee. Oh, wow. You know Eric Lee? Yeah. yeah, I remember Eric He's Lee. One of my best friends. And uh, we, we did a movie together. He, we are playing warlords. Right. So he, he, was kept, he got killed first. <laughs> he was fighting with a sword and everything. I'll show you the clip later. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then uh, what's done by Akamatro. Right. Akamatro is, uh, Ak you know. I know Akamatro. Yeah, yeah. Akamatro. Yeah, Ak yeah, Ak Ak yeah. He's, He's well famous. All, all the... Steven Seagal is a movie. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he became my student, Akamatu. Really? Oh, yeah. I did. He is serious, because, serious martial Because, the, yeah. you know, the thing is, you said... You he said became it. my student uh, first because he uh, had an audition. I said, let somebody in your there and say, hey, Art, come. Come and have give, a look at this. Give me an audition. See if I'm good for the movie. But so you, here, you yeah. said this. You said this now. <laughs> as you're telling me, I'm just thinking to myself, no guns. No high kicks, just Wing Chun. Just Wing Chun. And if yeah. we stick with that, Wing Chun's going to survive a lot longer than trying to make it something it's not, yeah, don't, right? Yeah, don't make it complicated. I always say, keep it simple. Don't make it complicated. The, you know Sarah Vivian? Yes. yes. She's, oh, my, yeah. she's my student. Really? Sarah's been on my show. Sarah's yeah, great. She's my Wing Chun student. Yeah, she, he she headbutted me. I'm not going to ask you to headbutt me. I yeah. got her to do the headbutt on camera. Okay. But, uh, but she's... Uh, yeah, she's, she's... want me to be in her next movie. Uh, really? Using Wing Chun with her. Oh. Teaching her Wing Chun and everybody. She's doing Wing Chun. Yeah, she's a great... Zara's yeah. a great advert for martial arts. Yeah. She's a great, great... Wonderful mother. person. Yeah. So what do you want to do in the future then? Apart from make more movies? Uh... I just want to help people. Yeah. I, I go to India, I go to Sri Lanka, you know. Yeah. I teach them for free, Sri Lanka, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, the guy did my online training program for 15 years. Never met me and I went there. Really? Yeah, teaching. And what, what, what was that like? So, when yeah, you went yeah, to see him, I bet he was... The standard was good. He was, yeah. He was really happy, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. you, you're doing great you're doing some great uh, uh, things yeah. in the world I'm doing uh, I, I'm going I, I will be finished with 20 countries this year the last last year was 25 countries wow just traveling around and do you get tired promoting it no I get uh, better all the time <laughs> really yeah and that, is, faster you have now faster now yeah more muscles than before <laughs> look at that Jeez, Arnold, are you watching? That's the same as Bruce Lee. Bruce that's Lee's got the, the same muscle, but oh. I think he's bigger than there. Oh, I'm going to put my and arms then, uh, away. Yeah, that's right. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. There, the gun show's not working. So, we're here for the Wing Chun gathering. Yes. And we're just going to quickly speak about that, because I know you need to get and work your magic on the mat. And this is devised by Aid Rhodes, one of your students. Am I correct? Yeah, he yeah. put this all together. Yeah. And the idea behind it was, as it says here, yeah. bringing everybody together. Yeah. Uh, how do you find them? You enjoy them because you've had, it's been very successful. This is the sixth year now. 
Yeah, I think it's a good idea. But when I when I go to teach and I, I, I you know, people from different lineage come, we all get on together. Relax, enjoy yourself, you know. This is what it's all about. Yeah. You have your idea. Okay. okay. It's like go shop, uh, shopping in the supermarket. Yeah. You take what you want to, you know, and then go back. Go back and then analyze and see, you know. Yes, definitely. What's Def good for you, you know, you can take it in, put it in a pocket. De de and definitely. I, 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 one of my best friends in martial art is, he was a, he was a cousin Gracie. Really? Yeah, I brought him over to uh, Manchester in 2004. We did a seminar in London and Manchester. Yeah, we became good friends because in, I went to Chicago to do a seminar and he walked in with one of the uh, field, my, my student's student. Yeah. And he seen Wing Chun. He said, he's very interested. Yeah, who teach you? So, and then he said, oh yeah, the Grand Master is in the seafoods in the, my seafoods in town. So he, 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 he take me there. You want to see it? So before my seminar, he walk in and I say, "Can you do a sem uh, demonstration for me for half an hour of what is Wing Chun?" I said, "Sure." Afterwards, he say, "Well, you can't speak." Yeah, days. yeah. He said, "We can do business together." Wow. So after I left, is the is the no bar fight? What to do with uh, my instructor? But, teaching them Wing Chun. Really? And he became a, uh, like a, a blue belt. Really? Yeah. Bec because He's a brown belt. And, uh, and uh, yeah, he came over and I, and I did a double impact seminar. Many people came. Jiu-Jitsu Jiu Jiu and Wing Chun would be perfect because mm. they both need yeah. sensitivity. When I did judo, I did uh, a bit of ground, ground stuff and I teach a few Jiu-Jitsu people. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good. I, I have to do this because I'm a psychiatric nurse. <laughs> I have 30 years. Retired seven years ago. And, you know. Uh, did, you, yeah. did you have to use the Wing Chun? I have Chun to use it all the time. No, Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> really? The Jiu-Jitsu? Yeah, Wing Chun, yes. Yeah, get away. Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah. do, you remember, do you remember Sifu Larry Hartzell? Do you remember yeah, Larry of Hartzell? Course, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Sifu Larry worked in a psychiatric ward for a long time as I well. Too. Yeah, and, oh. he, and he had to do the same. And he was very analytical about what worked and what didn't. So he had notebooks and he had certain takedowns that would work. Mm. And uh, he had. Yeah, you know. One from the Lopsau. Yeah. Lopsau, the, Lopsau takedown. The best, 200 the best technique is a blanket. The blanket. Yeah. Uh, what I'm gonna, I have to ask you, what is the blanket? See, so, uh, one guy got a glass bottle, smash it, and want to kill everybody. The nurses say, "Come and take this injection." No, nope. after this time. Yeah. So I, I say, they call me from the next ward. Right. <laughs> I got a blanket and go behind him and choke him out. <laughs> Nowadays, you go to jail. <laughs> and but it time, worked, right? I did, yeah. I took him in up. Yeah, we'll, 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 we yeah. can worry about the jail later. Yeah, Get yeah. rid of this guy here. Yeah, everything but works. Everything <laughs> works. All styles are good. Eh? All, yeah, there, there, is, there is no bad styles. No. That's, when, I, when I see people argue over martial arts, especially yeah. something like Wing Chun, where you see guys argue, it's like watching two guys argue over football. Wing Chun is not perfect. No, no. but you have more in common than you don't. Yeah. You know, you both like football. You have to know, in, uh, in Kung Fu, we say, Ji Gei Ji Bei Bak Jin Bak Sing, in the, you know, the, the Book of War. Yeah, yes. You said, know what other people got and know, and, and know what you got. You win every battle. That's exactly, you know what? Yeah, uh, uh, truly, That's a why I am interested in anything. I train Thai boxing, I, you know, everywhere I go, I make friends and see. You know. Well, you're a you're, you are a true master. I, I have to admit, and I am going to say this on camera, there's certain people we have met before. We met through Steve Died once at Seni, and I was teaching, and you were, go you were going to teach later on, and it, we did a workshop, and I, I, I watched it, and I was blown away, but we didn't really get a chance. I, I spoke to you, and uh, but it was a very short conversation, trust me. But it's an absolute honour, privilege, and yet, Everything that I wanted you to be, yeah. When I when I used to read about you as a young man, yeah, I always thought 
I really hope this guy's one of the legit guys, which you are, you know, you, 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 le you lead the Hope, right life. You have to be open mind. that's it. Yeah, be, be the advert. If you say yeah. you're going to be honest, be honest. If you say you're going to have integrity, have integrity. And that's one of the things we lack now in today in martial arts. Mm -hmm. People think if you're good at martial arts, then you should be good at life too. And yeah, the martial arts just makes, it makes life better. Yeah? I don't know if you found this. Um, it saved my life. Right. Many times, yeah. Um, when I first came, 1972 to England, yeah, I was in a big asylum. And big asylum means right. big hospital, mental hospital. Yeah. And you won't believe it, how it was like, you know. Wow. And um, so, you know, being, I have to leave my girlfriend at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my father said, you're no good at Hong Kong. Go study with your brother so I you know you really come to a strange country your English not very good and everything yeah so I okay Bruce Lee posted it yes train <laughs> you know yeah uh, that, that must have been strange and times. start teaching people in the hospital and yeah, yeah that's, that's the interest keep me alive Wow. Because if you haven't got an interest and you get depression quickly because you're in a foreign country and no friends and I make friends easy. Yeah. You see, yeah. But my mother taught me something so important for the whole life and I appreciate it. What is it? You have to be humble. Definitely. Otherwise nobody will teach you, nobody will want to know you. Yeah. No. And when, I, I, I say something very similar. When I teach people, the first thing you need to understand is you Empty know your cup, you right? know nothing exactly. <laughs> Empty your cup. I agree. The minute you turn up, the worst guy to teach is the guy. Have you done any training? Yeah. I've done a bit of training. I've done this. Oh. I've done that. I've done that. Oh no! Uh, immediately, all his bad habits are there, and he's never as good. The beginner comes in and says, "Beginner is brilliant. I can teach a boy never done before. You know, in five minutes, he can do this, do that." Yeah. Was a reverend. Yes. Till he died. He came to England in na um, the first time in 1990s, yeah. And I took him to Manchester, Master Scan's gym. I yes. was renting Master Scan gym. Right. And doing a seminar, I was. He came with me and watched the seminar, everything, and he, he loves it. Really? He loves it. And he made my Chinese name called Simo. Right. Say, say, uh, si say in Chinese, Kwok Moksi, Reverend Kwok. Yes. Yeah? If you turn it the other way around, it's Kwok Simo. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> means the thinking of the serpent, the meaning. I say, Father, I'm serpenting a different frog. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's funny, just as you were saying that. Yeah, he was very happy. Really? I, I, yeah. I, t I tell you... Yeah, for I, a bit in the fight, we have to do it quietly, you know? Perfect. Yeah. You know, there, just as you were telling me, you were saying this to me, I actually met one of your students once who's very famous. Uh, well, he's famous in this country. Bobby Davro. Yeah, yeah, my student. Yeah, yeah I forgot he, to mention him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I met, yeah. I met him. He's a in lovely Bedford. boy. Yeah, I met him in Bedford, and I was sixteen weeks, I taught him. Really? In Grand Theatre in in uh, Blackpool. Really? Yeah. I was wearing, I was wearing a t-shirt. I was wearing a t-shirt. I think it had Thai boxing on. Yeah. This was in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. And he was in Bedford, and we saw him, and I walked past. He looked at me. I looked at him, and I went, "Are you Bobby Devro?" And he said, do you do Thai boxing? And I went, <laughs> and I was ready to say, oh, you know, chase me, chase me or some ridiculous thing to him. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's not even who he was on the TV. Uh, and I went, why do you do martial arts? And he said, I do Wing Chun with Samuel Kwok. And then I, straight away, I was like, pleasure to meet you. And he said, do you do Thai boxing? I said, no, I just wear the T-shirt. I was actually Thai boxing, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm a bad Thai boxer. Very, very bad Thai boxer. Yeah, but he was a nice he, guy. Yeah. I, uh, I help him a lot. Uh, yeah, the way he mentally and physically. Yeah. He, well, he told me because yeah. I said to him, so, yeah. "Yeah, have you ever had to use it?" And he said, "No," but he said, "He said I suffer a lot with depression." Yeah. And he said, "And this really helps me." At the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, he was, he was trust good. me, he was a very happy man the day I saw him. So it was, it was good. That's what we want in life. You know? Yeah.
make make life more. I still talk to interesting. Him really? Time, time, yeah. Yeah. So come down. I say no, no, <laughs> not down all the way down to uh, Cornwall or something. Is that like where that. he lives now? Yeah. No, when he do the show. Oh right, right. Yeah. He, I've been to his house. Just slept in the house and everything. Yeah. And it was his wedding. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Has he only ever been married once? Or yeah, once. Yeah. Oh, f superb. You know, it's been an absolute pleasure. It really has. Thank you. And that's for me. I, you know, made my day. Honestly, I mean that. Thank you so much, yeah, sir. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank my you. one or two.